Okay, welcome to topic four. We are going to be discussing and doing division problems now. I like to think of division as the cousin of multiplication because that's kind of what it is. We're going to look at the inverse operation of that. So we're going to look at the inverse multiplication, and that's what, how we're going to look at division. And I'll explain that in a moment. But first, we need to introduce three vocabulary words. The answer to a division problem is called the quotient. Just like the product is the answer to a multiplication problem, the sum to an addition problem, the difference to a subtraction problem, the quotient is your answer to a division problem. Then you have two other terms. The dividend. The dividend is that big number that we are going to be dividing. And the divisor is that number we're going to divide by. So for instance, this first problem, 24 divided by 3. Now 24 is our dividend, what we're dividing by, 3 is our divisor. We need to find the quotient to that. If we know our multiplication facts, we can ask the question, 3 times what will give me 24? In this case, we know that 8 is that answer. Now, 8 being the quotient is our basic fact. All right, now we're going to expand that. We're going to say 240 divided by 3. Again, just like when we did this with multiplication, what you want to focus on here is that basic fact. 24 divided by 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8, and we have that 0 left over, so we're going to add it to the end of our quotient. Another example, 2,400 divided by 3. The number keeps getting bigger, but the problem isn't any harder. So we underline again that 24 and underline the 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8, and we add two zeros to the end. So again, we're following that same pattern here that we followed before. That is all we're doing with this to find the quotient of larger numbers that, have mul that are multiples of 10 and 100. To look at another problem, we take 63 divided by 9. 63 divided by 9 is our basic fact. So 63 divided by 9, we already know is 7. What about 630 divided by 9? Well, again, underline your 63 divided by 9. Underline that 9 and get 7. Have an extra 0. When we have that extra 0, we add it to the end. Now I'm going to throw you a curveball. Let's say it's 630 divided by 90. OK, so we underline our 63. We underline our 9. 63 divided by 9, again, is going to give us 7. Now, since there is a 0, in my dividend and a zero in my divisor, they cancel each other out. So my answer is just seven. So you're looking, it's not like multiplication where you add them. In division, those zeros can cancel out. So why don't you try a couple problems on your own?